So here we are with episode 11 of She-Ra and the Princesses of Power. Last episode, Adora found one of the First One's temple. I believe that's the same one that Madame Raz showed to her. And uh, she's because okay, she's gonna get in there, but Katra is right behind her, so we will just have to see what Katra has in store for Adora. If you guys like the video, like the video. If you dislike it, dislike it. I do have my full length up on Patreon and early access on the YouTube memberships. Other than that, let us get started. Oh, just... Oh, she does have the key, the sword out here. Better get in there before it closes. <laughs> she fails to make it in time, just... <laughs> Catra gets detected. The whole place is like, alright, we're about to blow up again. <laughs> say that Shira could heal people using the sword? How do I do that? Just stab people with it. That will heal them. What is your query? <laughs> this again? <sighs> Sorry, chat GPT doesn't have that in here. How can I use the sword? To make <laughs> <laughs> when you're talking with a chatbot. <laughs> Well, you know, Katra is a cat, so they, uh, she can't even hear her walking. Oh. Can I talk to her? <laughs> oh, gotta touch a button. Oh no, gotta grab something. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Could have blown Katra's head. <laughs> <laughs> well, <laughs> time in to initiate the blow up again. Oh shit! Damn, you guys just got these? Just ready on the go? I guess they're robots, huh? In I was gonna say in total darkness, but like, Catra should be fine, right? Well, it's gonna- Oh, wow, she got a- she turned into a shield that time. Where's her sword? Oh, it's right in the back. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah! Oh! <laughs> Do everything together. Oh, my wow. You mean the ones you kidnapped? Oh, just strange arguments. Let Shadow Weaver in prison and curse? Yeah, obviously. What other friends are we talking about? Come on. This thing will be back any minute. We need to get out of here. Damn, how fucking big is this temple? It's all the way, like, underground now, I suppose? I mean, they have been underground. That's a nice styling with the shadow. You know, the first ones really need to change up their password system. Uh, where did the door go? <laughs> well, it's not a fork in the road yet. Oh. Oh, good thing you guys didn't bump into anything here. I doubt it. Now let go of me. It's all virtual reality. So that's just, uh, okay. Oh, baby Adora. Oh. Oh, so she's having memories. <laughs> I was only speaking the truth. memories but why i have no idea oh this place is so weird how can you deal with all of this magic stuff 
I'm only dealing with it because I need to figure out how to heal Glimmer after someone got her cursed. What do you want? An apology? You're not getting one. Yeah, I wasn't the one who cursed her, so. Why did you help me escape after Shadow Weaver captured us? Not this again. It's the one thing I can't figure out. Why are you guys walking in the middle? You guys can just walk around. Oh, whatever. Did you really think they just let Shadow Weaver erase your memory like that? You still have some good memories, right? Doesn't mean that you can just block out the bad ones. I miss you too. Oh. I don't miss you. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh my god, that strength. You okay? She's feigning. Oh. Good work, Cadet. Way to gang up on me. You were fighting dirty. I yes. Was just leveling the feet. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just gonna release a little anger. Also, there was Kyle with his fucking acne. <laughs> uh, crying at the bathroom mirror. Relatable. <laughs> Damn, that's some nightmare shit right there. God, there's been a range of m music throughout this episode. Mm. Well, you know, it's a good thing that this thing is just made out of metal that can be easily bent. Like, what the f- And then here comes Adora to take the final hit again. Let's just get out of here. What is your problem? I was trying to save She's a rebellious teenager who's trying to be independent. I've been doing just fine on my own. That's no right. To you. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> I'm sorry for leaving. I couldn't go back to the fright zone. Not after I saw what the horde was really doing. I never wanted to leave you. <sighs> Then let's get in there. <laughs> Just too fucking troublemaker. You don't have to go in there. A point of trauma. Oh, she takes off her mask. Allows Adora out, but Catros gets to stay and get punished. I've come to expect such disgraceful behavior from But to bring Adora? Uh it's 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 the favorite child. I've kept you around this long because Adora was fond of you. Keeping her under control. You never protected me. Not in any way that would put you on Shadow Weaver's bad side. You can leave, just like I did. I don't want to leave. What don't you understand about? That? Why do you not want to leave? And I'm a better force captain than you would have ever. Mm. You always said you didn't care about things like that. Well, I was lying, obviously. <laughs> I was fine so being in way. second place. Oh, shit. God, are you really at the fucking step on her bed with shoes on? It doesn't matter what they do to us, you know? You do 
look out for me when I look out for you. This is an even younger self. God, the easiest metal made to just bend with their bare hands. Oh, here comes Catra. Just tearing everything up with her bare hands. Oh no, with a sword. Holding me back. You wanted me to think I needed you. You wanted me to feel weak. I wonder what I could have been if I'd gotten rid of you sooner. That almost like defeated purpose. I thought she was gonna toss a sword in there. Well, gotta get down there. You heard it, Clang. I really am going to miss you. You heard it, Clang, that easily. It's not that far in. Just jump down. <laughs> oh, there's Lighthove. <laughs> you must let go. You're saying to let go of Catra's relation her her and Catra's relationship? What happened to you? You're filthy. Are you okay? How does she get out there? What? <laughs> about personal space oh right 10 foot radius how'd it go did you <laughs> find it uh why is the princess loose an intact data crystal i have never seen one so perfectly preserved man i knew Catra could do it it's like i was telling you she is the best friend ever just keep it down i'm going to bed oh best friend oh dude this is another fucking episode where it just ends not and it didn't end with Adora, but Adora's final scene in this episode is her crying <laughs> because of Catra. <laughs> well, technically, uh, I know she was crying before uh, Light Hope just came in. It's just like, all right, Adora, you've got to you've got to drop everything. You've got to let go, you know, let go of your personal and spiritual belongings and all that you know one of these days once you've let go of the earthly possessions that you've had you've uh, you will also learn how to fly that is that is that uh, sorry I'm, I'm thinking about avatar <laughs> I, i'm probably gonna have to write uh, a whole different section like a whole different page of just adora and catra <laughs> uh, uh, until then uh we will be right back to the center okay so we got to see just a little bit of her face it's all bloodshot and everything, and then the, the, the pupils are just... I don't know what that is. <laughs> but it is certainly there. It's a very, uh, a very disgusting face, I would presume. And I can't remember if we've actually seen her without a mask on, even before she got banished from whatever that place is. And I do, I do wonder if the reason why she has this, <laughs> this disfigured face? I don't know, we haven't really, we, we don't really see the full, full frontal of it. But makes me wonder if this happened because she dabbled with dark magic. Who knows? Maybe she was just born that way, you know? <laughs> hmm. And then Catra breaks that promise, right? The, the, the promise of, I look out for you, you look out for me. Nothing bad can happen if we have each other. And then both Catra of alternative timeline says, you promise. It's it, it, whether it's that initial be uh, feeling back in episode two where she felt betrayed by Adora, right? That she is leaving her, and so they technically don't have each other's back anymore, and that nothing bad can happen if we have each other. But the reality is for Catra is that she has had it bad because of Adora. Perhaps that's one of the things why Adora ceases, and she's just like, you know what? It's time to cut ties. <laughs> time to cut ties with Adora. <laughs> Get her out of here. <laughs> I mean, even even after like this whole incident where she, uh, it, it's it's yet again Adora hanging by a thread or previously hanging by just her sword. I think I can't remember, but it was just it was also Adora hanging by a thread, and, and, and Catra's just gonna be like, "Yep, you know, I'm just gonna cut this, and I'm gonna toss the sword down there too." It's not like she was really planning on fucking killing Adora. And, uh, as much as Catra would like to, she doesn't want to do that specifically. Uh, what I would presume what Catra wants now that she's just like, hey, I gave you that sword back because, because that's uh, that's also what Adora was trying to ask this whole time. You know, like, why'd you save me? Why'd you give me my sword back? I gave you that sword back because I don't want you to come back anymore. And uh, obviously this isn't Catra tossing <laughs> Adora to her fucking death or anything, but this is Catra's declaration that I'm going to do a whole lot better than you ever can in the Horde, right? I'm going to be the best over here, 
and maybe you know Adora is already doing whatever and doing her best over at the, the the rebellion side and if the both of them get up to higher ranks you know they both can clash and perhaps finally clash at equal levels somewhere around there okay best friend <laughs> the fucking stinger <laughs> with her shoulders going up <laughs> trigger word ah <laughs> Pull ah oh, best friends. No, I have no best friends. <laughs> Keep your celebration down. <laughs> I'm trying to sleep out here. <laughs> All right, so that was episode 11 of Shira and the Princesses of Power. Let me know what you guys think about it in the comments down below. You know that I always like talking to you to to, to you guys. Uh, for me, I thought that this was a pretty good episode. We've got this whole focus on Catra and Adora, specifically their childhood, and this episode really opens uh, I was gonna say opens a lot of eyes. I mean, I only have two eyes, but <laughs> maybe I have an inner third eye somewhere in there. But it, it allows me and I would assume the audience to understand Catra's side a whole lot better. Uh, we've got both arguments from Adora and Catra, but uh, <laughs> towards the end really depends on who you're 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 able to empathize a whole lot more, right? Whose background you have been a part of. Uh, that in the end that you're going to be like, okay, you know, I, I'm i able to understand Adora's side or I'm able to understand Catra's side and, you know, I can stand behind that. Although I don't know about Catra standing behind, you know, a, a literal fucking evil army, but let's just erase that part for a moment. <laughs> let's just wipe that part in the fact that they're fighting for a, a literal battle of good versus evil. You know, let's just wipe that out first <laughs> and let's just think about their, their childhood within the Horde. Or the Fright Zone, technically. So I've written a few notes about Adora and Catra, because this whole episode I just needed to encase it in one specific page. If you guys want to read these notes, I do have them on the YouTube memberships along with the... What is it? Along with the early access as well. Uh, I, I, I will try to go through these notes, but... These are the times where uh, if I were to edit these videos by myself, I'm kind of just letting the, the scene, the, the screen sit and I'll just add in the images myself on the parts that I'm talking about. Cause like it might be a little bit, I might go a little bit everywhere, but whatever. I'm not the one editing this. So <laughs> I don't know if I would want to put that for, for my editor. To <laughs> so I'm going to try and go through the episode from beginning to end. And if I hit the part where I can t tell you about these notes, then I'm going to do it. And in case I haven't said it yet, you can find these notes in my YouTube memberships for $1.99. Comes with early access as well. But all right, here in the beginning, we've got Adora just walking into this first one tech as we see that they are very advanced and everything. Uh, <laughs> I also really like this shot of Adora of Catra just coming right at dude. She was she could have been fucking squished. You see that dirt coming out of that? Damn, dude, it was coming up with vigor. <laughs> but Adora comes in. Catra's also here. I that was Catra, but I said Adora. But uh, I'm if I switch names, you know, just know who I'm talking about <laughs> and we'll be fine. This whole area of the first ones really gives me vibes of the Horde as well, where it looks like they're competent, but they're also incompetent at the same time. Like you guys got the, all these high tech technology and all that. And like, you guys are able to tell who's the administrator is, but like only when you're you're, you're standing right in the middle of the stand, right? That, that's where they've got like the, the motion sensor. <laughs> so you just step in the middle and they're just like, hmm, you're not the administrator. If you need me, I'm gonna self-destruct. Anyways, the reason why Adora is here is because she wants to heal her friend, a uh, Glimmer, who has been cursed by Shadow Weaver. Although I'm still kind of wonder if like the only reason why Glimmer had it was because she dissipated her cells, <laughs> which what ew, that's what it looked like. She she just dissipated her cells in order to just get out of that trap, and like that's possibly the reason why she got cursed, or maybe she would have been cursed even more if she hadn't gone out at that point, but. Whatever, we'll, we'll, we'll figure that out for another time, right? One of these sort of protections function is to heal and restore balance. I suppose one of the ways to heal, what I said during the reaction, which is to just fucking stab them. <laughs> you healed them. That's how that shit works, right? <laughs> this is just Leo Lee's what they've got going on right now. The first ones, they're trying to protect themselves. <laughs> 
while Dora is trying to talk to this chatbot and just absolutely failing, you know, she's just over, uh, the, the chatbot's just gonna be like, query not recognized. I don't know what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> and Dora just keeps trying, asking the same question, but she did think about Light Hope, to which, uh, I believe they'd said Light Hope will come for you, right? The woman I saw when I touched the sword, where is she? She's, uh, this, this robot. What's her... Uh, she had white eyes this whole time, but right now it's glowing a little bit more, I presume. So, yeah, the chatbot says, Light Hope is here, she's been waiting for you. And then there's something about, like, you will meet her soon enough, first you must let go. Okay, okay, you are not ready yet, you must let go. Okay, so to let go of her earthly belongings, I would presume that's also was what Light Hope was saying, let go. Or maybe they just really wanted her to fall into a ditch, I don't- <laughs> All right, fall into this gap, Adora, let go. Ketra, finding a shiny little crystal thing, right? Takes it out, triggers the, uh, well, this is not her, tri well, technically she did trigger the, uh, the, the security, but then Adora just uh, out here, just, sorry, Shira just out here, ready to annihilate Katra. <laughs> dude, Katra catch out and duck, dude. <laughs> the half of her body is just gone. <laughs> But the, the two of them get into a situation where Katra is getting attacked and, you know, I'll think about this too as we continue on towards the end of this episode, where Katra had said, like, you didn't need to help me. And we can kind of see that she was able to get herself out of here. Again, these spider robots, they look intimidating and all that, but like, you can just rip them with your bare hands, so. Uh, but then again, you know, maybe Katra and Adora just have inhuman strength <laughs> that they're just able to do this or the metal is very bendable it's very thin you know it's a thin layer of metal <laughs> but this is the first part where we see adora feeling like she needs to protect katra right so despite adora coming in here activating the alarm system getting herself in trouble adora immediately brings herself into this whole fray right and helps her <laughs> through this whole spiel. Is this the first time that we've seen her turn into a shield or have we seen that this part before? I can't specifically remember. Also, it's what I was mentioning with Adora saying, I'm protecting you, I'm a threat too. And Catra's just like, I, I didn't ask you to protect me. <laughs> I'm here in my own business. I'm here to grab this shit. And that that's really all it is. But now you've brought yourself into the situation that I'm in. So Adora asks, why are you here? Why did you find this place? Does Shadow Weaver know you're here? Really asking, like, does mom know you're here right now? <laughs> you're gonna get in trouble. <laughs> but Katra responds with, like, Shadow Weaver's got bigger problems. Why are you looking at me like that? No, I know what this is about. Okay, so this is Adora giving that low, like, smirk, right? Yeah, I knew you'd be weird about letting me, es uh, about letting me let you escape. About me letting you escape. Okay, it's not because I like you, <laughs> Katra says. <laughs> And Adora's just like, I didn't say anything, I'm just looking at you. <laughs> what a fucking tsundere act right there, dude. <laughs> so Catra, feeling a little annoyed, pokes back at Adora. So I, why are you here? Where are your friends? You do everything together. Kind of like how Adora and Catra did everything together. So she's putting that one out. But Adora doesn't take that lightly, right? The ones you kidnap and held for ransom, right? The one that you've cursed. And then Catra's just like... Who else am I fucking talking about, you know? <laughs> Duh, I'm talking about those fucking idiots. <laughs> Throughout this whole thing, I really enjoy their dynamics in the in the fact that they are childhood friends. They they are or were unfortunately best friends, but their their rivalry and that inner feeling of uh, of hatred that Katra has for Adora begins to surface up, especially as they start to see uh, their flashback again. So I really like how they can get playful with one each other and then they just start <laughs> just going right into arguments but then it could just either go for the worse or it'll just like they're, they're just two NPCs de <laughs> and then they just go back to like a, 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 a playful low conversation where they're just bantering with one another. <laughs> but we do have another point where Catra continues to say like, hey, we don't need to go to together. You do your your weird thing and I'm gonna find my own way out. That's, uh, again, that was her original plan, right? But unfortunately for them, they have to continue walking through this fucking cave, this underground dungeon, it looks like. Just going absolutely everywhere. I don't even know what these materials that the first ones made, but they ended up in the, <laughs> as 
Catra says the infinite darkness room, but this is actually the simulation room that also take from your memory. Also, Adora comes over here and she's just like, is this light hope? <laughs> is this light hope? And it scans them and then it creates a simulation of the uh, of the Fright Zone, but many years ago when they were still kids. One of the first simulation that we see is Catra and Adora when they were young and they, they were kind of showcasing the separation of their ages. <laughs> And for some reason, I, I literally can't tell the difference of like how young they are. <laughs> unless you show me, uh, unless you show me Adora's teeth. <laughs> and I'm just, I'll be like, ah, oh, that's, that's when she's in her, her teenage years or her adolescent years, you know. <laughs> but the first thing that we see is Catra coming to cry to Adora when she was young. And, and the reason why Adora had this whole, uh, you know, she, she's, she, ble no, she says that she's bleeding, but she's not. But she basically called Octavius an ugly, uh, a, a dumb face somewhere around there. And that's what got her in trouble, right? Got her uh, a little smack, I would presume. And then she runs all the way to Adora. And so what Adora does is take her hand, goes to Octavia, calls her a dumb face, like, damn, dude, this woman is just chilling. <laughs> oh yeah, calls her a dumb face and then runs away. And they're also reenacting this because I suppose that's what the simulation is doing, getting them to reenact their memories. And perhaps that goes along with the idea that in the beginning, Catra saw Adora as her savior, right? And that's why when they were young, she used to go to Adora and cry about it. You know, get a little reassurance, get a little comfort here and there. But then as she continues to grow up, she starts to see the difference between her and Adora. And that gets her through, you know, get, gets her into this rebellious stage that she is just <laughs> permanently in right now. Where she doesn't need Adora, right? She can do this by herself. She can be independent and she can be successful without Adora. Somewhere around there. After the first memory... Adora asks Catra the same question again, which is, why did you help me escape? And Catra still at this point doesn't really have an answer specifically, right? She says, not this again. And <laughs> Adora is just like, I, I can't figure out, right? You didn't have to save me. You could have gotten got caught. Why risk it? And then here she is just getting ready to fucking fall. And so... Catra says, do you think I'd let Shadow Weaver erase your memory? Which I suppose is one of the reasons why. I wasn't really thinking about that, but I suppose I, I, I thought she, I thought Shadow Weaver originally just meant that she was going to wipe all the memories that Adora had got of when she went to the, the times in the rebellion. You know, I, I thought that that's all that she was going to erase, but maybe Catra was also afraid that she was going to erase her memory of Catra. And then at that point, she would not be needed anymore. And, and also Shadow Weaver kind of said that to Adora, and so, to, to Catra. It's, it got their names. So I'm starting to swap their names. Shadow Weaver said the same thing to Catra. But if Adora is to have her memory wiped, then again, Catra wouldn't be needed either way. So Adora says, I don't know probably, in terms of the memory wipe. And then Catra says, you've never had much faith in me. Can you blame me? I, you know, just, eh, whatever. And then her tail grazes her hand and Adora notices that. And so that she smiles about it. Very cute. <laughs> Sometimes, you know, you just can't hide your feelings through your tail. Oh yeah, there's also this part where, you know, they're playfully fighting each other <laughs> yet again. Even though they were kind of, you know, slightly a bit of a, not to say argument, somewhere around there, right? A little bit of banter. So at this part, at the 10 minute part, Adora asks, was it all that bad growing up in the fright zone? You still have some good memories, right? And so Adora says, of course, but the horde is evil. I had no choice. I couldn't go back. Katra doesn't say anything about that. And Adora just goes and says, I miss you too. <laughs> to which, you know, Catra just goes straight into her, her little sundariness. I don't miss you. Get over yourself. You think you're important? Get on out of here. <laughs> this takes us on over to the second memory, if I remember correctly. And it's a memory of Catra and Adora dueling with one, uh, with one another. Adora is, uh, you know, fighting fairly. And Catra is using dirty deeds in order to try to fight Catra, but as, uh, before she could win, right? Here at this part, we've got Catra who smiles 
You know, she's like, yeah, I'm finally gonna get the upper hand on you. But then Lonnie comes over to hit Catra. And, you know, in the end, she's able to uh, beat Ka uh, beat Lonnie, right? Defeat Lonnie. But in the end, after all of this, Adora comes in and just immediately takes her out. This part, I have the note, I, I wrote it as, Adora's always the one with the glory. When Catra's about to get or earn something, right? She's about to get a victory here at this point. She gets blocked and Adora ends up winning or something blocks her or something gets in her way. And, and that something results in Adora winning. Kind of like at this spot later on as Catra is just tearing apart this fucking spider thing. You know, she's just, she's just doing her best to tear this all off and as it's slowly dying, right? And she's, she's reveling in the fact that I did this all by myself, right? I'm gonna do the, the finishing move and then Adora just comes in, fucking kill stealing her. <laughs> like, yo dog, fucking chill, right? Adora comes right into it, and then she acts like she's the hero. Like, she's just like, hey, I just saved you. Yeah, you know, Catra does a little scowl, and Adora's just like, are you okay? Right? Picks this up. Catra says, I had it. And so Adora's like, sure you did. She says that playfully, because that's just kind of how her and Catra's relationship are. They banter and they bicker with one another, except here in this point, Catra isn't bickering or bantering with her. She's saying it genuinely. I... I got this. I don't need you here. Going back to the memory, we've got Catra who's yelling at Lonnie because, well, I was about to get the, I was get the, I was about to get the W. Why the fuck are you getting my way? And Lonnie is just like, look, you were cheating. I was just, I was just loading the field, all right. <laughs> and so Adora comes in just uh, with saying that you were awesome. Did I hurt you? To which Catra says, no, you're lucky. I let you win. Right. This is her just kind of putting her emotions off, but. Because this is how Catra has always acted towards Adora. Adora uh, would essentially believe her, right? Because Adora is naive <laughs> and that she's willing to believe people at face value. Well, I mean, she knows that Catra's lying, right? <laughs> like Catra's saying, oh, I could have won, but I've let you, uh, I've let you won. That sort of thing. Like Adora kind of sees that she's lying, but she's unable to read the messages beneath it. But as Catra says, we're right. If I came in first, people might expect me to do stuff. Second place suits me just fine. Adora shrugs that off. Right? Kind of like just thinking of it as typical, like, oh, a loser talk. <laughs> you're a loser and you're just trying to, you know, I didn't lose. I just let you win. As, as Adora goes off with her friends, which even Katra, as we saw in like first episode, she was still not really in the group, right? She was friends with Adora, but she's, she doesn't really care about anybody else. But here she is walking to the bathroom. Well, not the bathroom, but the, the locker room tossing her chest plate aside and fucking crying out of anger, you know, and frustration. And she sees herself in the mirror, which she's reenacting her childhood memory here. And, you know, I did say relatable. Crying in the bathroom about it, you know, just lying, being like, look, it's whatever, all right? If you guys need me, I'm gonna go to the restroom. See you later. <laughs> I'm just in the bathroom for the next 30 minutes crying. <laughs> But as Catra realizes that, you know, she's uh, she <laughs> she's reenacting the simulation, the computer comes back in with the, the this fucking spider that's just fucking... <laughs> I do love that picture of uh, <laughs> that, that, that stalled simulation of Kyle. Look at him. Is this a dude? That looks like a mustache now. I'm so confused about this lizard person whose name I still haven't gotten. <laughs> so we've got this horror scene of Catra being tied up by the spider and she sees Adora, right? So she calls out for help. It's that feeling of helplessness that she gets. And as what we saw in the first scene, when she gets that feeling, she cries and runs to Adora. And so here she is expecting Adora to save her, but she doesn't, right? Adora in the end is unable to save her this first time. And I, I love this scene of, <laughs> of Catra seeing that, you know, oh shit, I'm fucked. Adora isn't here for me. She's not here to save me. I'm going to get absolutely annihilated, <laughs> right? She, in, in her muffled yelling, she yells for Adora, but Adora is not coming for her. And so she tears up before she, <laughs> before she's just like, wait a minute. 
I'm an independent woman. I can do this shit myself. <laughs> Just tears herself out of it. And then we've got the whole scene of her tearing into the to the spider, strategically looking around to see what she should rip off and break and, and, and tear and all that. And Adora comes in and just saves saves the day, right? Goes up to Katra, are you okay? All right, sure, whatever, right? The bicker and the banter continues to walk away, not really understanding what Katra is truly feeling. So Katra ran off and Adora is just over like, what's your problem? I was saving you. Like, <laughs> fuck's your problem, girl. Like, uh, goddamn, not even like, a, a single thank you or anything. And Katra continues to recite the same thing. I don't need you to fucking save me. So fucking chill, right? I've been doing fine on my own. No thanks to you. And so Katra, sorry, Adora, th th their names, Adora takes her hand apologizes for leaving and that she can't go back after seeing what the horde is, is is all that but honestly here at that point talking about the horde and talking about not being able to come back doesn't really fucking matter right this is just a situation that like Catra doesn't really fucking care about she's not here to talk about this thing in particular but Adora did say I never wanted to leave you you could come join a rebellion. Adora continues to say, you're not a bad person. You don't belong with the Horde. Let's get this over with, she says, right? The next memory comes where uh, <laughs> Adora's, uh, sorry, Catra is getting her cat prowess out here, right? And Adora's unable to keep up. And it's that one thing that Catra's just like, yeah, I'm so much better than you in terms of agility. <laughs> flexibility too i would presume i just love her getting a little smug you know be like what's it like to be in the world's slowest person huh <laughs> you know, we we have this part for one moment where adora just comes up and grabs catra's hair and you know what that makes me think of it makes me think of kids who have pets and like their family aren't teaching them to be gentle with that pet. So she's just over here fucking grabbing the cat by like its tail or or in, in this case of like a long cat, right? With long furs. She's just grabbing that cat by the fur. <laughs> like Jesus fucking Christ, dude. Jesus fucking Christ. They they head into the crystal room where Shadow Weaver usually uh, come here to fill herself up on, you know, crystal magic and all that. We also got Adora coming in, uh, telling Katra, you don't have to come in there, you know, because this is a big traumatic point for them. And Adora is able to recognize that. And I, I presume in one way, you could kind of connect it in the way that Katra sees Adora, right? In the fact that Adora was willing to run away from this whole problem. She ran away from the Fright Zone, ran away from the, the Horde, and now she's with some other people being buddy buddies with them and being a part of the, uh, the, the fucking rebellion, the enemy forces and all that. She's running away from this shit. And so hearing this part with Adora telling Katra, you don't have to go through this again, right? That's Adora perhaps running away from this situation and also because this situation isn't really all that bad for her anyways. So she's kind of speaking about it through an outsider's perspective, but she was there, but you know, she wasn't the person who got like the brunt of the punishment. But here is Katra who continues to not want to run away specifically. She's not like physically running away, but I do feel like mentally <laughs> she is retreating. <laughs> Katra here in this moment, right, wants to experience it again. She's willing to go through her trauma to and, and relive the scene. So the kids ends up seeing a, a what, what's her a shadow weaver's face, you know, and uh, they're they're about to run away, but Adora is able to get out, but Katra gets uh, has to stay, and shadow weaver is just over here scolding her and essentially threatening to, to toss her out. <laughs> if she does anything to jeopardize Adora's future. And despite Adora coming in trying to protect Catra, still doesn't really help, right? Catra still ends up getting the brunt of this punishment. And I believe it's right here where Shadow Weaver says, you've never been more than a nuisance. I've kept you around because Adora was fond of you. But if you do anything to jeopardize her future, I will dispose of you myself. It's just really fucking putting the, the, the fear. I was gonna say the fear of God, but you know, God's not here. <laughs> and then this is when they start arguing and like they're, they, they're arguing, but then they're also like their kid selves are also like arguing as well. Don't really, maybe that's 
uh, eh, maybe that's just like an interpretation of like their childhood self finally bowling over or they're still also just reenacting a part of an argument that they've had. I, don't, I, I would presume it's the first one, unless somebody says something else. But Adora, you, uh, sorry, Catra says, you've always played the hero. And Adora says, I was trying to protect you. You never did, not if it put you on Shadow Weaver's bad side. Admit it, you love being her favorite. And so Adora says, that's not true. After you left, who took the fall for you? Who was protecting me then? Very interesting. When you left, who took the fall for you? It was Katra. Who was protecting me then? It was Katra. <laughs> I protected myself. Don't let Shadow Weaver treat you like that. You can leave like I did. Running away. Quote, unquote, running away. In Catra's mind anyways, right? Uh, even though Adora kind of puts up at okay front, right? You can leave like I did. Like, if I can, <laughs> you can too. Stealing my friend's slogan right there. But at the same time, it's like in situations like this, it's you can't exactly tell a person when they're in a bad household, in a, a bad relationship. In this case, kind of like her relationship with Shadow Weaver and the Horde in general. Catra, I mean. You can't just tell that person, like, <laughs> just fucking leave, you know? Just uproot your whole entire life and just go. <laughs> like, it's, even though, like, I get what Adora means, the way that she says it, it's just like, all right, dude, like, uh, this continues to come from someone who is unable to understand what the other person is feeling. And it's just like, you've got depression? Have you tried being happy? <laughs> that sort of feel. <laughs> Petra turns that around and says, oh, because I need to follow you everywhere, which is this is just Katra, you know, fucking showcasing what how she sees Adora this whole time. And so uh, uh, Katra finally gets, uh, you know, balls up her fist, I mean, and she says, I don't want to leave. Don't you understand? I'm not afraid of Shadow Weaver and I'm a better force captain than you. To which, like, you know, Adora didn't really have time to become a force captain. Like, she kind of... Went to the other side after she got oh, whatever. Also, you see how tiny the sword is? I swear the sword shrinks. <laughs> it gets bigger whenever it wants to. It's like She-Ra, you know? So you said you didn't care about that. I was lying, obviously. This is the part where Catra finally gives Adora an answer, right? Why do you think I gave the sword back? I didn't want you to come back, Adora. Really fucking trying to throw her out, you know? Yeah, we'll see who who throws away who now. <laughs> Oh my god, I swear that fucking, that handle of that sword just got bigger. This is like, I think that's an okay height. It got a little bit bigger. I, I, did that did that just disappear off of like, all right, I'm, I'm sorry, I'm getting distracted by this. No, 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 you can see her turning around and then blocking it. But like the handle is a little shorter here. All right, this sword. I'm just gonna assume it's like Wukong's staff and it just grows, you know? <laughs> But as uh, Katra runs away, she ends up with the fourth memory. This is uh, the, the younger Katra. And then we've got Adora coming on over, which again, Jesus fucking Christ. You see the way Adora was doing? She, she just stepped on her bed and they just walk like, <laughs> excuse me, girl. Just can't you just walk around the bed or at least put your, you know, put one foot right here and then the other foot on that side and just, you know, not step on her bed. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Here's uh, Adora coming in to, to comfort Katra. <laughs> I love that Katra hisses, you know? <laughs> so it doesn't matter what they do to us. You look out for me, I look out for you. Nothing can, uh, yeah, nothing bad can happen if we have each other. You promise? And so I feel like I've kind of already made that note on the fact that like, this is something that they promise and perhaps Adora had already broken it this whole fucking time since episode one. Or episode two! Oh my god! Who would've thunk? Who would've thunk? But the scene with Shadow Weaver, I presume, is like the big pivotal moment. Or at the very least, the pivotal moment for us viewers. It also, Katra, as she relives his memory, right? The, the feeling that Adora was always the favorite child. And uh, Katra is told by Shadow Weaver that she, she she wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Adora, right? If Adora wasn't so fond of you, despite you being a fucking troublemaker, I would have disposed of you myself, right? But 
if you do anything to stop Adora's future, I'm gonna fuck you up. <laughs> I'm, gonna, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna destroy your ass. <laughs> right, really putting that fear right into Katra. And uh, it, it really gives off that, it continues to give off that vibe. It was in episode 10, I believe, right? With Shadow Weaver's hair is all down. She's all tired and Katra is giving Shadow Weaver that form of pity that I would presume Katra sort of wish she had, which is why she gave Shadow Weaver a bit of pity. And it comes from that feeling, I would presume, in the fact that even though I don't like you, I, you're, you're still kind of like my mother figure in the end and I still want you to acknowledge me and not the favorite child. This is when they're like a little bit more older. I, th I believe this is the uh, Adora with the gap teeth, <laughs> but the Catra that was before when they were much younger, this Catra right here. And also I believe that's this is the same age group of Catra <laughs> that's from the first memory, right? As she ran to Adora for picking a fight with Octavia. It made me think about this one certain comment, which I'm a little upset about but it might also continue to boil over if we continue to see a little bit more of Adora and Catra flashbacks. But somebody had written and made mention that Catra was adopted by Adora. Like Catra was literally like a fucking stray cat <laughs> or some shit. And, and it was Adora who picked her up. And that's the reason why Shadow Weaver allowed Adora to have Catra because Shadow Weaver in the end, you know, in her own manipulative motherly way, she, she loved Adora, but that's what she was willing to allow by letting Adora adopt Catra. And that sort of notes, I will say for people who makes comments like these, and like, uh, I, I believe they're kind of taking it from what directors or like the creators of the show had said, like the, the details that they didn't have. But honestly, when it comes to those type of details, I'd much prefer to know him like after the season's over, you know? Cause like, it kind of pisses me off a little bit when they got they go through this. And like, I felt like I could have made out the fact that Catra was here because of Adora. But uh, also at the same time, the whole idea of Adora cat, uh, taking in a stray cat, it makes it clear in the ways that Adora sees Catra, right? In, in the ways that a fucking rich kid will go around with like a, a, a fucking maid or something, you know? And like they're going around having fun with said maid or servant or something. But in the end, when they get into a precarious situation, when it's something that demands punishment, it's not going to be Adora who gets punished, it's going to be Catra. And so I like that here in the beginning with Adora and Catra's relationship, Catra was always looking forward to Adora, running to Adora for help, for you know, her, her savior, as I've mentioned. And the fact that if Adora is the one who took Catra off the streets, then we can, it, it, it makes it understandable why Catra would run up to Adora like that. But then as they continue growing up and Catra starts to see that Adora is the favorite child, that Adora is always the one getting the glory, that she's the person in first place and Catra is always ending up in second place, right? Beneath her. Catra doesn't like that because the difference between Catra and a cat, I would presume, is that Catra is also a, a, a person. <laughs> Not to say that cats aren't a person. I mean, uh, cats, they're, they're not people. They're cats. But Adora's not a cat. She's an actual person. But it really does feel like in the way that they showcase Adora here is that Adora sees Catra as a pet, essentially. <laughs> and kind of like how some people are very ignorant in how cats react. You know, like some people, like, I, I don't like cats, but when they see cats, they're fucking rubbing the cat like this and just creating all that energy within the cat. And then it gets it all hyped up and that's why the cat swipes at you. And then people, and then some people, instead of trying to figure out why the cat did that, they're just like, oh, cat sucks. They always scratch me when I vigorously rub them. <laughs> don't take that out of context. Feels like that kind of people for Adora. And so I, I will say this whole episode really makes you see Adora in Catra's eyes. And I, I really enjoy that because for a while now, we've kind of see everything through Adora's eyes. And when it comes to this point where the both of them have very valid opinions, but you can see why their opinions clashes with one, uh, with one another a whole lot more. And in the end, when you think about it in the ways of these two kids having to live in 
essentially an abusive household, especially with someone like Shadow Weaver. I believe I've mentioned this before, right? That Adora, she did fine. She did well in the Horde, but she's naive. So she believed in the Horde. <laughs> But then once she gets out and like she sees what the Horde has been doing to the rest of the people. Although I do wonder if like Adora would have kind of noticed that eventually once she actually gets into war. Because like the whole thing that she's been doing before were simulations. So like even before she find the sword by Shira from Shira, The Shira sword. <laughs> The Sword of Protection is what it's called. Even before she finds I wonder if eventually she would have figured that out and moved her way uh, away from, move herself away from the Horde and then getting into the Rebellion. I do wonder that, you know, whether the Sword of Protection really was just here to accelerate her progress or if Shadow Weaver had some other way to try and keep her. Moving away from that scene, we've got Adora who's fighting a bunch of spiders. Her sword is stuck in the corner, but she ends up falling down to the bottom, right? Hanging yet again. And Katra comes up with the sword, you know, as she watched the final memory and she thinks about that promise that's broken, right? We see this expression from Katra where it's a little bit of catharsis, but also it's her reclining back you know, just kind of sitting in the background and just let her do this, what I would assume Catra would assume maybe is like a heinous act or even Adora. Adora might have assumed it as, as a heinous act. Essentially telling Adora that, oh, it all makes sense now. You've always been holding me back. You wanted me, you wanted me to think I needed you. You wanted me to feel weak. Every hero needs a sidekick, right? Right, you want me to be here so then you can feel better for yourself. And so Adora, still not really understanding, right? That's not how it was. The both of us, uh, you know, we're just, uh, we've just got on the, the wrong side of the foot. The wrong side, the, the wrong side of the, all right, I don't know where I was going with that one. Okay, so the sad thing is I've spent all this time hoping you'd come back to the Horde. When you, when you leaving was the best thing that happened to me. I am so much stronger than anyone ever thought. I wonder what I could have been if I've gotten rid of you sooner. And so, there she goes. <laughs> and so Adora's just now you're apologizing, right? I never meant to make you feel second best. Please don't do this. But at the same time, right? Adora just never really caught it. Look, again, that sword clang off of that wall right there, right? And then you heard it clang down there. That's such a, that's such a short, you might sprain an ankle if you don't like land correctly, but like, you'll be fine, Adora. <laughs> and so here's Katra telling her, bye, Adora, I'm going to miss you. Like she's actually going to fucking die or something, but you know, whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so she toss out, she walks away. Light Hope tells her, you must let go. All right. And so Adora lets go and we are back to the horde where Scorpia and Entrapta are talking with, with each other. I do love that Scorpio's out here ready to talk about the same thing again. And then Trapta's just like, don't worry, I know exactly where you, you said it. So here it is. <laughs> I love that. But here is uh, Catra coming back all disheveled and Scorpia sees her, right? What happened? You filthy need first aid and all that. And I like that Catra's just over here like, hey, what did, we, what did I talk to you about? Fucking personal space? Hello? <laughs> The only person who's able to get into my personal space is Adora, all right? <laughs> my best friend. Ah! Ah, my heart! <laughs> what happened? <laughs> Just saying best friend hurts me right in the Kokoro. Although I do like that right after Catro's like, yo, personal space immediately gets her personal space <laughs> destroyed by Entrapta. <laughs> God, I just love Entrapta just going back into the to the thing. Just like, oh, yeah, shit, sorry, I forgot that's supposed to be me. All right, back on. <laughs> so anyways, you got it? <laughs> you got the stuff that I need? <laughs> Entrapta now has a nice little shiny thing that she's going to do work for the Horde and all that. Good stuff for them, you know? And then Scorpia mentions the word best friend. She is the best friend ever. And so Katra hears that, she stops. You know, you got that fucking stinger <laughs> just really showcases it. And then she walks away here in this part. She is the best friend ever. I suppose maybe Katra at that point was, you know, also think about Dora, but also maybe at that moment, she wasn't being the best friend ever. <laughs> ooh, ooh, why I oughta. <laughs> Oh yeah, Catra at this part did say I'm so much stronger than what everybody thought of me because people had always underestimated her because I would presume of Adora. 
But this whole scene, Catra is kind of, oh, uh, she, she's a little delusional, she's a little delulu. And her talking about how like, oh, you've always been holding me back, which is true. <laughs> but at the same time, I, I kind of feel like it's not just Adora holding you back, it's probably other people as well. But you know, Adora is the, the, the biggest sore spot, so understandable. With this part, right, where she's like, I've been spending all this time hoping you come back to a horde when you leaving is the best thing that happened to me, right? Now that Adora is gone, Catra is accomplishing things and, and she's not beneath Adora, essentially. Right, she got promoted to the force captain, and because of that, it makes her feel like, oh my god, I could have had this this whole time if Adora wasn't here. Right, if she was not here, I could have done so many things without her. First of all, would you have been in the situation to get rid of uh, get rid of Adora, or you know, are you bit on a a, a bit of a, a power trip right now? <laughs> That it kind of feels like you've been going through for a bit now that you're getting the power that Adora once held. It goes back to that thing again, right? Would you be able to get rid of Adora? And even if you got rid of Adora, would you be able to get Shadow Weaver to acknowledge you and not get rid of you herself, right? Would you even be here in the first place, right? Would you even get yourself here in this situation if Adora hadn't taken you in? If that's the story we're going with. <laughs> would you be here? Would you really be here? Or would you have continued to be the same person that you were when you were a child? Where you were scared and you you had no one to run to? Which, you know, I, I kind of think about it. Like, yeah, like Katra in the end did grow strong from the trauma and the punishment that she's had. But was she able to do it because... That's just how she was and she would have been able to do it alone. Or is she able to get strong because Adora was there for her and also because Adora eventually becomes an object of envy for her? Who knows? Who knows? And, and that kind of goes back to like the whole idea that I've mentioned where now that she's fully splitting with Adora and all that, right? And she's going to continue working up to in, in the horde, getting to a higher situation, a, a higher rank i mean you know maybe even going past shadow weaver and all that and if adora does the same thing in the rebellion when they meet with each other they're gonna be on equal grounds and uh adora is not gonna be up there on top of Catra anymore within the horde and uh <laughs> the, the 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 other thing that i kind of like is that the way that you saw adora was as a child and uh <laughs> again with the way that it feels like she kind of treats Catra like she's just a fucking pet or something and not really thinking too much about her feelings being a little naive and all that again taking people at face value i begin to think that adora's and catra's separation was actually good for the both of them because if adora had continued being uh the way that she was in just a horde and perhaps you know getting soothed by shadow weaver if she ever goes through like a morality crisis you know, if she was continues to be the favorite child of Shadow Weaver and all that, that would have continued to strain her relationship with Catra a whole lot more. And perhaps that could have ended up with Catra betraying Adora. We would never know. So the fact that Adora left and accelerated this whole issue that they've had instead of just letting it to continue to slow brew. And especially with Adora being by the, the rebellion's side, right? Where they're... I would presume they're much more to talk about their feelings and not put on a strong face and all that, you know, minusing Glimmer, but you know, Glimmer had that moment of breakdown last episode, so I thought that was really nice. But uh, again, right, with Adora being able to be within that group that will shower her with love, even when Catra tosses her aside, it would probably would allow her to perhaps think more about what Catra is uh, why Catra said the things that she is, things that she said without hopefully getting angry at Catra. But unlike Catra, who has to stew in this problem and she doesn't particularly have anybody to talk to, the stewing that she does just ends up turning into hate and anger towards Adora. So I'm hoping that Adora will have her time to, you know, be a little sad about this moment and and being able to talk to her friends and work through this because she probably would never have this chance if she didn't go out and find the, the, the sort of protection and all that, right? Everything just all accelerated, so. <sighs> 
yeah, that's a this is this was a nice episode. You can probably tell by how long this this discussion was. <laughs> But I like this episode. I really enjoyed it. I had to write a whole fucking page uh, on this. I mean, the, the last thing that I kind of wrote that I believe I have not said was Catra feels Adora just wants her as a sidekick, someone to make her look better. And perhaps in a way, right? In her own childish way for Adora, probably that's what she felt like. Even if she denies it, there's probably a part of her somewhere that felt good, that felt like she was the hero, right? Maybe she might have a bit of a, a, a savior complex. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Especially when it comes to Catra, right? Always trying to come in to save Catra, finding that Catra is like a damsel in distress, kind of, but then Catra is just like, no, I'm not. I can, I'm, I'm capable of doing things by myself, right? It's, it's that feeling of Adora not trusting Catra. A lot of things. I really enjoyed this episode. Um, we're, we're really going for like, I don't know, a four-parter I would pursue because we have two more episodes after this and we're gonna, and we, we still gotta get Entrapta back eventually. I presume with Entrapta, she's just gonna <laughs> make some shit for the Horde and then she's gonna engage with the princesses again. And she's just like, you guys left me. Ooh, I'm so upset. And then the other people was just like, we thought you were dead. Like, we saw a fucking fire and everything. <laughs> and then the chat was like, oh, okay. Seems like my friend didn't abandon me this whole time. Anyways, I'm going back to their side. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. But we'll just have to see uh, when Entrapta comes back. If she does, I would actually be pleasantly surprised if Entrapta is just like, yeah, I'm, the I'm one of the antagonists now. <laughs> I'm going to work with the Horde. They got so much better shit over here. <laughs> That, that would also be very fun, but yeah, until then, we'll just have to see what's gonna happen next. If you guys, uh, well, uh, if I have anything else to say <laughs> after this long discussion, I will write it in the description down below. Thank you guys for sticking around, and I'll see you guys <clears throat> in the next episode.